Good morning, everyone. It's Andrea here. This is the Global Empowerment Summit. And today I have some gift from you from the sunny, sunny Kuala Lumpur. You see, I have to wear my shades <laughs> because I'm sitting just in front of the sun. So I'm bringing it to your home. And now we are having a, a nice module offered by Stefan Taylor, uh, who is who is trying to help people to prevent health being a long term uh, problematic issue. and. Uh, just watch this uh, beautiful module. This is uh, his gift for you this morning and enjoy and later see you with all the programs for today. We will be live with iWeld. We will be having uh, interviews, two workshops with Absan and also another workshop uh, with Lilita. We have live interviews with uh, Healing. We have Terence, uh, we have Tika and we also have another workshop with Kati. So three workshops today just for you from my living room. <laughs> Enjoy the day and enjoy the presentation by Stefan. Let me just make it bigger and take away the branding so that you see the full screen and enjoy the show. Hi there, and welcome to this, the next phase of your training in the 60 Day to Success program. As you'll see, I'm not here alone today. I'm joined by Jan, a psychotherapist and coach, but she's also been through the 60 Day to Success program herself. And today, Jan's going to share some of her expertise relating to why women sometimes find it more difficult to embrace change in their life when it comes to managing their own weight in terms of how they view food and their relationship to it. So I'd like to welcome Jan, first of all. Hi, Jan, how are you? I'm very well, Steph, I'm great, thanks. Excellent. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into this presentation for everybody. Uh, shall we get going? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, okay, here we go. Okay. I know Jan's gonna bring up the presentation on the screen at her end, and here it is. I'll thanks. leave you to intro it, Jan and to give us a little bit of insight as to where it's going to go. Brilliant. So a little bit about me, because I, when I went through the menopause, I, previous to this, I'm 5 to 11, and I've always been really thin and worked out tons and tons. And then I went through the menopause, and then gradually I started to put weight on. And even though I worked out harder and harder, using my own language, I started to turn to a potato. And it seemed inevitable, um, and there was a lot of agreement for that. So in the end, I got so fed up, but I did some research and found Steph. Um, and I was just so thrilled to go back to a size 10, the size I was when I was 18, which I was way beyond what I could expect. And um, felt that this is something that everybody should know about. But it also made me very interested about, I've got a whole history of relationship with food and I think most of them um, have so I wanted to do some research and um, when I talked about it with Stefan he said well or what you said I spoke to you you said um, the thing is is that he's he, there was a difference between your male and female clients about how how whether it's a smooth journey or whether it was a very bumpy journey is that you know, that's what you were saying wasn't it something like that Absolutely. There, there's, there's been a, a sort of a notable difference between how men tend to view the program and then how women tend to view the program. So in terms of mindset and where that comes from, there seems to be a distinct difference between men and women, for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, and so St Steph would sometimes talk to me without telling the names of his clients, and I'd give him some um, tips. And usually the issues were, were around um, keeping going and not find, and how to how to encourage these female clients to surmount barriers, um, things that got in the way of the of the program being relatively effortless. And so that's why I decided to do some research. And what, why was it that women had appeared to have more barriers about this than men? And it was really interesting to find out what we're about to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, knowing this is the reason why this is here is because you may not be aware of these differences. You may not be aware that you might be carrying these things from your past into this program that you're coming into now. So be more aware of it. And uh, talking through this today um, will highlight some things that may trigger some lights in your head as to what's happening with you and will certainly help you move forwards. Yeah, so, so the purpose of the, sharing this information with you isn't to highlight potential barriers and then have you crash against those barriers and fail. In fact, it's just the opposite, um, is to highlight these barriers to you and, you and maybe create some, oh, aha moments. And you might go, right, I've got some of that and I'm gonna, gonna read some more, I'm gonna get some help or, or just being forewarned is forearmed. And um, in addition, Stefan's, Design the program to incorporate some of the learnings from this. So he'll be adding that in. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so there's four areas that I found out um, about why uh, for women losing weight can be more complex. And yes, it's more complex, but so what? Does that mean that the 60 day program doesn't work? Absolutely not. It does work. In fact, my experience is, is that if you give up to it and decide to just follow it as if it's a recipe, it really, really works. And that's just a of straightforward way. But obviously, that's easy to say and maybe not so easy to do. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get into that as to where yeah. your mindset comes from and uh, maybe how adopting a little bit of these, well, some more of these principles will help people move through it without so much resistance. Exactly. And also to know, to understand that you experiencing, if you experience resistance, it's okay, it's normal. That doesn't mean you have to stop. You just can recognize it and then remake your agreement with yourself and go again, which is great. Absolutely. So the, so the areas of the four here, one, and we'll go more into each one of these, there's a whole issue about conditioning, about how women are supposed to be. We're supposed to be beautiful and quiet and small and sweet and and, and terribly unconfrontational. So eating is about controlling those as aspects of us that don't fit in, or we mustn't be seen to be greedy, we mustn't be seen to be too interested in food, we've got to be elegant. You know, whether or not you subscribe to that, we have been subject to that sort of messages ever since we were, before we, we were aware of them. Um, and then the second thing is, unlike for quite a lot of men, although some men share this with women, um, being fat or being a tendency to overeat or to eat more than your body wants, which results in fat, is not just about the food, but it's about a question of, it can be that you've had disturbing experiences around your sexuality and therefore you want to eat to cover up, to not be so attractive because you feel less threatened. It can be because you think um, you're a mother and your mother's job or a wife's job is to cook and provide for everybody. And you, you know, the more you cook, like the Jewish um, housewife, the more you cook, the more caring you are. Um, it can be about because every time you feel upset, you want to, to not feel that and eat, because by eating, you interrupt this feeling of discomfort. And it can be you want to go, well, screw my conditioning. I'll eat as much as I want, and then you know, people just have to take me the way I am. So it could be any combination of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, who said I have to be a size 10 or size 12? I'm going to be size 18 and Yabu sucks. Yeah, and I, I see a lot of uh, elements from each of those sectors, each of those uh, 
elements that you mentioned coming through in in the program itself so yeah so that's really the whole psychological background yeah and then if you add on to that whilst you know maybe a bit more now and poor men poor young men now have much more pressure on them but historically men didn't diet and women started dieting when they were like 12 and a half so we most women i know have been on hundreds of diets the cabbage soup diet the atkins diet the weight watchers diet the um fasting diet you know the, the cambridge diet that you know you name it there's, there's so many out there and they all promise so much absolutely uh, and then they don't deliver and then the final aspect which we'll look at is the whole di the way different way men and women approach um targeting goal setting planning and, and, and focusing it appears it's, it's yeah. easier for for men to do that than women bummer eh? <laughs> so so if we look at that these the first one and there's a brilliant book if you haven't read it which is by susie Allback, um fat is a feminist issue which is the whole issue about conditioning and really apparently it's heartbreaking but research into young girls as early as five shows that they're aware that they need to be thin yeah um and really you know if you look at mad men you, if you've seen that you can see that advertising started then really to show how women should look so we've we've absorbed that almost with our mother's milk about how we're supposed to be and we know that thin is sexy and desirable and fat is unattractive and shameful and because of that, it makes it really hard for us to understand what being healthy is for us. Yeah. So there's a disconnect there, isn't there, between image and health from Completely. a very early age? Completely. It's not even into health. It's like, I think it was, um, the, what was the, the, the one that got the king to abdicate? I can't remember who I say for a second, but she was the um, American. This is and yes. Wallace. This is Wallace. She's quoted often by many women, including me, which is, you can never be thin enough. Right. Which is like, and she was really, really tiny. Um, so it's, it's, it's not, you may have osteoporosis, but as long as you're thin, it's cool. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think all of us, you can see article after article in women's magazines about how we hate our stomachs, or we hate our knees, or we hate our bottoms, or we hate our bingo wings. Or we hate, we hate, we hate, we hate. So we label parts, they don't fit into this, this you know, genetic celebrity Cinderella figure. And therefore it's bad and wrong and we hate ourselves. So that's very hard as well because if you hate your body, you're not going to look after it. Absolutely. And there's a Absolutely. cycle of punishment, you know, so you'll starve it and then you'll overeat. And then you'll starve it and you'll overeat. So it's extremely interesting around the whole issue about how do we change that as a woman our perspective about judging ourselves and judging other people about not being good at, good enough to accepting ourselves and loving ourselves and wanting ourselves to be healthy and having the reference point be us and not what other people think about us or even worse what we think other people think about us yeah yeah absolutely so this is a you know a big area, and obviously I'm only talking about it for five or ten minutes. Um, but I think, in terms of raising one's own consciousness about it, it's it's you know, it'll be very strange if you don't have some of this going on for you if you're a woman. Yeah, but like, like you say, Jan, it's 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 super important whether whether the ladies listening to it right now can or cannot associate with it. It's like I say, it's, it's information out there, it's knowledge, it's understanding yes. where potentially those feelings could stem from. Yes, uh, exactly. To explore that a little more. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I know you're a fan of meditation and, and I am too. Um, meditation is a brilliant way to develop that experience of self love and self acceptance. And it's so easy, yeah, it's wonderful to do. It's very empowering in many ways and very healthy as well, actually. Absolutely. So, so there's all sorts of routes to. Um, connecting with that self-acceptance and that love and then it's much easier to look after ourselves because we want to it is. 
yeah. we, we value ourselves and we think we're lovely and we want to do the best for ourselves. Yeah. And it's that's very... ultimately, yeah, that's ultimately where we're looking at shifting through this sort of information mm -hmm. and through the 60 Day Success Program is ensuring that the ladies listening to this and going through the 60 Day the Success Program can associate with health from the inside out. That's right. And it's a journey um, and, you, and, you, and it might be, you know, it might, it's a really interesting and wonderful journey because you can re-establish who you are. You, you, you probably might not be who you think you are and who you are, you are, you're really happy. You might end up being so much happier with who you are and thinking, God, this is great. So, Absolutely. yeah, this is a very, you know, this book's a very good place to start. Meditation's a very good place to start, but you may have lots of other resources yourself. Okay, so that's the first area. So the second one is around food being much more than nourishment. So this is this whole problem about food getting tang entangled with key psychological um, issues. So the whole wanting to be sexy by being thin or wanting to be avoid being noticed or pursued by men, being overweight. Now this is going into my psychotherapy area, but just for your uh, clients and your perspective. Many women who've experienced unpleasant sexual abuse or situations become overweight in order to avoid unwelcome yep. attention. And unfortunately, given the Me Too movement right now, in fact, all women have received unwelcome attention on a certain level or other. So some of, your, some of our desire to be cushioned may be related to that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm not going to go into that too much, but if you feel that might be an issue for you, it's really helpful to seek out counselling yes. and support in that area. Yeah. Um, and then wanting to be a good wife or mother or providing for feeding for others. This is a, such a classic thing. And I hear about it on the, on, you know, when I'm on the 60 day success uh, group, you know, people say, it's so and so, it's my daughter's birthday, I'm going to have to eat this cake and blah, 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 blah. I have to do it for them. So this, there's this push, which is you show your love of others by cooking and making or buying loads of food that are terribly bad for everybody. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Totally weird. Why wouldn't it be doing it by cooking food that's terribly healthy? But it's yeah. not. Again, that comes down a lot to conditioning. Um, and what I see there in terms of being the provider. So we're supposed to live in that equal opportunities world, uh, but the, the woman is still, the majority of the time, the one who looks after the household, cooks the meals, looks after the children, blah, blah, blah. So it's into that providing, feeding, helper type role subconsciously. So falling into that role already. Yeah. And and added to that is that big helpings are good and small helpings are mean. Yeah. Right? So that if you're, I mean, I've got it. If I'm, if I'm hosting, if I'm hosting, you know, back in the olden days when I used to have people around for dinner, um, I would cook much more than I would just for my husband and I. Yeah. Because this whole, and I think it's post-war, because, you know, I was born after the war, but my parents were in the war. And it was all that whole thing, you know, to spoil us, there was, yes. situate, condi uh, conditions of spoiling or celebrating were like an, with an abundance. Yeah. I mean, I can understand they were on rationing for like, I don't know, at 10 years or, and it was awful, although they were extremely healthy apparently, but, um, <laughs> but we've still got it. Yeah. So it's chocolate Absolutely. sundaes and cakes and sugar, sugar, sugar. Yeah, a lot of that Western diet is full of that refined sugar. And uh, it's been modelled into society as this is what you should have on a birthday. This is what you should be eating on a, uh, at a anniversary. celebration. Yeah, anniversary, weddings, funeral, Christmas. anything like that. Christmas. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it comes back to that advertising, doesn't it? It's, it's that message that we allow to drip be drip fed into our subconscious via what we read or see on the tv yeah. media, social media so it's and i think that it's, 
yeah, I think that it's not, again, for no one should be feeling bad about that because it's so difficult, it's, it's so uh, pervasive, it's everywhere. And it takes it a decision to stop engaging with that. Yeah, and but that is totally possible, isn't it? Yeah, you have to go, Yabu sucks, which is, what, which is my colloquial phrase for going, no way. And um, <laughs> not interested. Yeah, absolutely. So that then then so by the way you only have one of these none of them but they're like four different aspects of the, of the psychological issue. So wanting to rebel uh, versus wanting to be good and be popular. So for some people they've gone the rebellion route and that can take part you know tattoos, um, piercings and and other things. But in the relation to food, it's you know it's like we said just going well I'll be size eighteen and screw you. Yeah. Or the alternative that is like, I can't eat, I must be thin. I must be thin in order to get validation. If For women, if you turn up and you've lost weight, people always say you look good. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Yeah. Except I went to a party just after I'd lost my 24 pounds. And apparently a couple of friends went to my husband and said, is Jan ill? Oh, really? <laughs> I looked great. I was wearing this beautiful evening dress. And he said, no, she's never been so healthy. What are you talking about? He said, well, she's so slim. Yeah, she meant to be. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> very amusing. Um, so, yeah, so that's interesting. And that's interesting to see how that plays out for each individual who's watching this. You know, are they, are, do, do they have a tendency to want to be the good girl or the screw you girl? Yeah. The rebellious one. That's yeah. my one. <laughs> and then the issue about wanting to self-medicate and soothe ourselves when we feel up, upset and low now I'm lucky I've never had this but not with food anyway um, alcohol but, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah you feel upset so you reach for a chocolate you feel upset you reach for a cake uh, I mean I don't like those things but I'm lucky lucky me but you feel upset like a glass of wine for sure so so it's, uh, it's, it's connecting with the fact, yes, we want to look after ourselves. Yes, we're going to have times when we feel down. And choosing to substitute destructive soothing mechanisms with constructive ones, like an aromatherapy bath with oil and candles and music. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Absolutely. Or, or watching a lovely TV show. Or uh, my little trick. My little treat was two teaspoons of um, almond butter, <laughs> <laughs> which I checked with you. It's okay to do. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. But but again, it, it comes from that where a lot of ninety percent of our thoughts are come from our subconscious. So coming into this sixty day success program, if you have been going through diet after diet after diet, and there's many ladies who are watching this who have been in that position that 90% of what you're thinking about whilst entering the 60-day program is fueled by your past. Yeah, we're just so, going to come on to that in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> you've almost said that, but I think the main thing is, is that you, who said you can't feel uncomfortable? Yeah. So we think you feel uncomfortable and, you know, that, that somehow we have to push that down or we have to, like, turn it off. No, it could be really great. It could, if you reframe it, you're feeling uncomfortable because you're changing. Hurrah! Yes. You're feeling uncomfortable because you're trying new things because your body is reconfiguring. Great. Okay. Yeah. So, I love that. I love that. So you don't yeah. have to see it as a bad thing. You don't have to squash it. You can celebrate it. I always celebrate when I feel hungry. If I feel really hungry about half an hour or so before a meal, I go, good. I've clearly. My body's ready for the next lot. It's coming in half an hour or so. Brilliant. I didn't eat too much so far. Good news. Not thinking I have to go and eat some cheese now in order to, which is my thing, um, not cake, uh, is in order to stave off the hunger pangs. Hunger pangs are great. It means my body's working. Have a glass of water or a cup of tea and I'll be fine. Yeah. It's, uh, like you said perfectly, it's framing it. If you frame it right, and you are moving in the same direction as that framework, then it's going to work for you. But like you said, Jan, things that 
are really worth having, basically are worth trying hard at. So if you recognize something's difficult, then embrace it. It means you're applying yourself in the right direction, which is absolutely spot on. I mean, if it was easy, you'd have done, lost the weight already. So yeah, go figure, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I quoted something on here, you know, to quote another of that, you're worth it. You really are. We're all worth it. We're really worth having fun, wonderful lives and being, yeah, really, being happy with ourselves every morning when we get dressed, yeah. which is how I feel now, as opposed to pissed off and hiding myself. Yeah. So, and, I, you know, I'm, and I'm sure you, you want, but I, I want every woman to have that, every human to have that, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So you led into the diet thing. So yeah, ninety-five percent of diets will fail, and most people will lose half a stone or a stone, like fourteen pounds, and then they'll put it back on. Yeah. Or forty-eight percent of adult UK adults tried a diet last in twenty fifteen, and this year, you know, it's fifty-seven. It's fifty-seven percent of women, and they did it. They tried a diet this year. Last year, they're probably trying it again this you know, different one, the cabbage one this year. You know, it's just oh god, yeah, and it sets up such a, a horrible baseline of failure. It does, without a doubt. It's um, something I love, uh, I love a quote, and it's by Einstein. It's the definition of insanity, and it says to repeat the same thing over and over again and get the same and expect different results, yeah. Um, so and that. People don't necessarily associate that behavior with dieting. Um, but the, like you said, John, the, the numbers, the research just speaks for itself. And unfortunately, the numbers are moving in even high, in an even, even higher direction as, uh, as we get through the year. So with what you've just been through in terms of being able to associate how you feel, where it comes from, your next step forwards can be based around this information that you're getting today. Absolutely. And the other thing is, you know, if you're a bit of a rebel, which I am, knowing that the diet industry wants us to keep in a failure loop, so we have to keep buying more low fat spreads and all that terrible, well, it's terrible stuff. Yeah. You all agree. Yeah. Zero percent yogurt play yogurt. Great. It's got nothing in it. <laughs> all that other stuff has got weird, weird, weird lists of ingredients. No. Yeah. But then they, they love it. Absolutely. They make millions of pounds out of it. So you can go, again, you can go Yabu sucks and refuse to participate because yeah. you're on a program that works. So again, talking about reframing, I, I would really recommend reframing this program as not a diet. It's a life, it's a life choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think hopefully you're here watching this and you've already heard that message already. Hopefully you've heard me say that to you already if you're at this stage of the program, because it is a lifestyle choice that you're making in, in terms of hitting that sort of reset switch with your mindset and how you associate your health with food. Yeah. In terms and of moving forwards. The main difference is a diet is about outside in again. And we've mentioned this a bit earlier on, which is, you know, yeah. you kind of, you hate yourself. So you want to get rid of that stomach. You hate your legs. You hate this. You know, so you're trying to like cut them off by eating less and, eating going to Weight Watchers metaphorically speaking. Yeah. But um, this is about loving yourself enough to follow the recipe that Steph's got and to embrace the program. And 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 really I know the reason it was relatively easy for me. I just thought I did exactly what Steph said. Just every day. Yeah. I just did what he said. Yeah. Um um, With that, can, can, I, can I just pick on, the, on, on that one thing that I know that that was the case for you, but I also know that you've embraced it as your own. So you've taken the information, yeah, and you followed the information and now you've embraced it as your information, as it were. So I think that's an important transition to mention at this stage that, yes, the information is given, um, but you have had your success because you've embraced it, you followed it, and now you've made it your own. Yes, well, right? yes, so it's like at the beginning, I remember after two weeks phoning you and saying, am I going to have to weigh everything out for the rest of my life? And you said, no. You said, you're just doing it, first of all, to get clear about portions, and then you'll just get it. Um, yeah. 
which I have. I I still use the scales for porridge, but that's because I'm just getting the you know, balance between the liquid and the not too runny thing. Yeah. But, um, but um, so that's one thing. And secondly, there was stuff on your list that didn't work for me. Um, mm. You know, for what on a, a particular type of body and some of the things that people really like. For me, I don't like very much. Well, my body doesn't actually like them. Yeah. Um, so whilst I was following it in the first phase, I thought, for instance, I don't like kale. <laughs> no one's going to get me to like <laughs> kale. And I don't like green smoothies. I don't like smoothies at all. So I don't yeah. have those anymore. But two years later, I... I'm still in the same weight and the same size, but I but I follow the principles, but I but I found out what works for me. Yes. So absolutely. Um, I've made substitutions, but that I know exactly what that means and how that works. Yes. Um. Yes, yeah, so I made the, I've embraced the principles and I've got them, and therefore and now I'm living them, and it's it's just really easy. Yeah. And my husband's caught the bug too, which is great. <laughs> It's always great to see that ripple effect move away um, ah. because that generally, that's generally what happens. Um, and again, that links back to some ladies um, have a fear of doing something just for themselves. Yeah, which is about you, but you're really worth it. If you make yourself really beautifully, excuse me, I'm just going to forget that. If you make yourself beautifully healthy and you're going to live longer and you're going to be happy with yourself, it's going to be positive for your whole family. Absolutely. In fact, for everybody you have contact with. So Absolutely. our first duty of care, in fact, this is something on the, the, the psychotherapy clinical code of practice, which is first duty is to take care of yourself. Yes. If you've got a broken counsellor, how can you help somebody else? And I think that applies to, you know, like, like on the plane, it says if you have yeah. a kid by the side of you and we, we use, lose oxygen, Mummy, put it, put the mask on yourself first, and then put it on your kid. Because if you die before you get to do that, both of you are going to die. Absolutely, yeah. So Great self-care example. Self care first. Self care first. Mm. Okay. So, uh, and then the final area, and I know Steph's got quite a lot of this in the program. But so there's a gender bias on targeting and focusing, um, and and, and f- fulfilling plans. Because we get a emotional. Yeah. Me, <laughs> me included. So research inside in working outside of it has shown that men actually are much more successful at setting goals and planning and achieving their targets relatively effortlessly. And we have, we get derailed by how we feel, like we're having our period. So, although if you're personal and full, you can let go of that. But you're having a bad emotional day, so therefore you have to eat. And this is really interesting, which is, which is we're back to an earlier point, which is you're having a bad day. Guess what? If you eat really well, you'll feel good about yourself. Yeah. And then you won't feel bad anymore. Hooray! <laughs> But men visualise their goals more easily than women do. Apparently, we're more likely to procrastinate than men. And then when we do set goals, we set crazy goals like, I'd like to go from a size 20 to a size 10 in two months. So, which is, anybody would tell you is completely unreasonable. And it's not achievable. So therefore, we set ourselves up to fail before we start. And that gives us a good reason to stay the same. Yeah. Do you think there's any connection there to how the subconscious mind wants to keep you in a stuck position? Because ultimately yes. the subconscious mind is going to be sort of trying to derail you to keep you where you are right now, even if it's what you don't want, because you've created that air of normality. So if we go lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight over a period of, let's say, a decade, it's normal. So the subconscious mind is trying to bring you back to normality. Absolutely. Well, the conscious and the subconscious mind, actually. So, yeah. yes, there's part of that, but there's also probably part of, it could be psychological issues again. You know, if you succeed at this, who will you be? Yeah. 
and what else would you have to take responsibility for in your life? Everything. Excellent. Great news. But it might not <laughs> seem like that. And um, yeah, so it's so I know Steph works with you on setting smart objectives, which is a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Um, putting your goals in writing, which is which apparently increases success by fifty percent just when you write it down. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And the support team obviously the sixty day success, and then later on in the process, I know you start doing a vision board, but you have to visualize the difference it's going to make with you being able to be the way you want to be. And I just think this it's not just about food anyway, this program, it's about exercise and and health. And I I just I've got I'm fitter now than I have been for years and years and years, and that's such a stronger and straighter. And yeah. like combining it with yoga has just been, you know, mind dwelling on that level. So I think it's just wonderful to know that. I've increased the charges by considerable percentage points in, have, in being really healthy until I kick the bucket, as opposed yeah. to slowly degenerating in, into have, taking more and more pills every every year. Which, yeah, absolutely. Which I, I'm not going in that direction, thanks. No. But again, it comes back to that um, setting your mindset today for what your future body will be like. So. Yeah. How you're thinking today and your actions today are going to be how your body how your body is going to represent itself in maybe a week's time or two weeks' time, but ultimately repeating those good practices, having them creating more of a vivid image of, about where you are now, but also where you want to go, fuels that fire for success more and more. And the more you do that, the more it becomes the norm. Yes. The more it becomes habitual. And then you'll have that reflective moment and look back and say, I can't believe I was there. I can't believe I, I found that so difficult. I can't believe I was struggling with those things. But that transition period, like you said, where it becomes a little more challenging and to embrace that part is going to get you to exactly where you want to get to because you have the vision. Yes. You're setting That's smart right. goals and you're moving yourself forwards. Yeah. And, and, and I think, it's a choice to trust the process. And I would say absolutely trust the process. Stefan's done it in with enough people and you know, and women, because they're people, but enough humans to have the track record <laughs> to show him, to show you that that everybody that's been on the program and stuck to the 60 days has had a, you know, a huge amount of success. And for those of you, you will then need to keep doing it because you've got bigger targets and it's actually, you know, the first three months is just the start. Brilliant. I mean, it's, it's, it's just about, it gets easier and easier and easier. That's all I can say. The first two weeks or so, or maybe the month, the first two weeks for me were head scrambling. But of course it was head scrambling because I was actually rewiring the way I thought, about what I thought about food and what I thought about what I needed. Yeah, which is a absolutely. whole lot less of a whole lot different foods. Yeah. So yeah, it felt like I, I had a headache because I was actually rewiring my head, and that's about <laughs> you can read about neuroplasticity, which means we, yes. we can remake our brain, and we do that by changing our habits and by choosing to adopt a completely different way of doing things. Because if, yeah. as Steph said, if we do the same thing, we get the same crappy result. Absolutely, absolutely, love that. Good. So, so in summary, um, the 60 Day Success Program is not like going to watch a movie where you sit there like a, a, a passively and the movie takes you on experience. So it won't do it to you or for you, but it is a brilliant recipe for success. And, you know, that's, that's it. Uh, so you, you you will hit points where you've got questions and possibility difficulties, but then you can contact Steph and he'll help you through it. Like I was going, I got a party to go to. It's been in the diary for, for six months, only three weeks into this process. What shall I do? And then we made a plan and it worked brilliantly, um, which was no drink, which is fine because I could then drive. Um, and 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 then you eat as much as eat around the food sort of as healthy as possible, but don't make an issue of it. Absolutely. Brilliant. 
Yeah. There's that really highlights Jan how there is always an option. There is always a way. There is always a solution. Um, something I was reading about a couple of days ago was that um, obviously we don't know what we don't know, but it's also perfectly okay to say I don't know. Yes. It's perfectly acceptable for you to say, I just don't know how to make this work. So um, if you have any questions as a result of this uh, amazing information that Jan shared with us, and if you want to ask Jan any more questions, uh, if you want to contact Jan herself, then drop me a message. You know how to get hold of me through the uh, email or through the Facebook page. Um, but ultimately, as Jan so kindly wrapped it up there, it is a road to success. It's a roadmap to success for you if you choose to trust it, embrace it, and move forward with it. So I, yeah. I, want, to thank, I, want, I want to thank you, Jan, for, for that insight and really helpful information. I know it's going to be helpful. Um, it might be worth going back and, and watching this again at some point and using yes. it as a good reference tool to be able to pick up something different next time you listen to it, next yes. time you work through it. Um, but thank you, Jan. You're welcome. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I wish everyone the greatest success. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. Have a fantastic day.